Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic. I'm the host of the Android Factory. Today's episode, we're going to talk about JSON. We're going to talk about how to deserialize JSON, how to parse some JSON, and even discuss how to parse polymorphic JSON, which just gets a little bit more complicated. So I've done a few things off camera. Let's go ahead and jump right into it, um, mainly just getting some resources for us. So we have a simple .json file that has just a list of these state references, let's call them state objects declared inside of JSON. There's just a list of 10 of them here. It's pretty straightforward. Our advanced JSON here though, starts to actually talk a little bit more about our polymorphic design. So if we take a look at all of these three different instances of a person, we'll see the first few fields are actually pretty much the same, but then we start to differ. So this person is of type student, so they have a grade level and favorite subject associated with them. This person is a teacher, so we have subject taught, years of experience, and then this person is retired, so we have different fields that just correspond to that type of person. So parsing this out can get a little complicated if you do not know the right tools and the right ways to actually do this, but if you do know the right tools, it's actually very straightforward, it's extremely powerful, and it's actually very readable. So let me break it down for you and let me show you exactly how everything works. Last little bit here before we jump into some code, we've created two little repositories that are just very, very simple here. We just go ahead and point them to the particular files that we just talked about here, the simple JSON and the advanced JSON, and we read those files. We just output a string here. So it's basically mimicking kind of a network call because if you'll notice here, um, we are inside of just raw IntelliJ. Uh, as opposed to Android Studio for this episode, we are not necessarily building an Android app, but this is a uh, hundred percent Kotlin. So this is directly applicable to Android development. So let's just go ahead and continue on here. We see that we are just creating an instance of our repository. We are then reading the data out of that. So now we've converted that um, you know, list of JSON objects into just a single string. And then we have our Moshi instance here. Now, in order to parse that list properly, we are going to have to have a data class here that kind of mimics the structure of the data. So taking a look at one of those items inside of the array here, we have the ID, name, abbreviation, estimated population, and we can go ahead and just create a data class to mimic that. We'll notice here that these first three fields are exactly uh, the way they are defined inside of the JSON, but we'll notice there's a little bit extra you know, sugar that we need to apply to this last one because the key is called something different than our variable name that we would prefer to have as you know, just developers. Um, we need to annotate this particular field with the at JSON name estimated or EST underscore pop um, so that we tell the deserialization process, hey, uh, you know, this is not the actual name of the key in JSON, instead this is, but please parse that out and put it inside of this variable. All right, and with that said, we can get into the actual parsing here. So if we noticed again, last time flipping back here, we see that this is actually an array of objects. So what we'll need to do here is we'll actually need to parse this JSON string as a list of these state objects. And the way that we go ahead and do that here is uh, I'm going to define a variable here saying our state list type. This is going to be equal to the types dot new parameterized type. And we can pass in list here, class dot, uh, not size, class dot Java. And then we have our state class dot Java here. So it's a parameterized type suggesting that the overall type that we need to actually parse into is a combination of these. So we have a list and then we have state. So that's going to result in the list of state objects. We can go ahead and create a state adapter now from this, which is a, uh, a Moshi specific tool here. So we will say Moshi.adapter. This is where we can kind of declare our more normal looking uh, type here and we can pass in the state list type right here. To be a little bit more declarative here with our typing, I've gone ahead and just added in the types for these different variables here. Once we do that, we see that this is no longer uh, needed or it's kind of implied, but we can see here our state adapter is now a JSON adapter of this particular type. And then quite simply here, we can just say our state list, state adapter, excuse me, dot from JSON and we provide it the string here for simple JSON. We are going to add in our type here. We have the list of state. We do have a little bit of an error here because this from JSON does return a nullable 
uh, object here in case, let's say, the, the JSON is malformed and it can't actually process it, it will return null, throw an error. So instead, we know the JSON is properly formatted, so I'm just going to bang bang that to kind of get rid of that error. And then iterate over this list and, and do whatever we want here. So we're just going to print each one out. When we go ahead and run things here, we should see all of the uh, JSON in a nice data class format that we're used to seeing. And once the program runs here, we can see all of our data looking like it is inside of a data class, which is exactly what we are looking for. We are successfully parsing this JSON uh, you know, into this particular list of state type, leveraging the types.parameterize type. So uh, we have our simple repository working and the simple JSON here, but let's go ahead and dive into the more advanced and more complicated JSON. And taking a look here, we are going to create another data class here to represent you know, our data, of course. But as we see here, we have the type, it is student. I've added in here, we have the option for the teacher or retired. And then these other two fields differ based upon which you know, type this person is. So what we're actually going to do to represent this is we're going to have a sealed interface here and let's just call this person. We can then create a, uh, sorry, a data class here. We're going to call this one a student. And of course, this student is going to be a person. We're going to duplicate this a little bit because we are also going to create a data class for the teacher. And we're also going to create a data class called retired. And inside of here, we're going to pass in all of the information that make up each individual JSON object. Okay, so I've gone ahead and built this out here. We have the data class student, teacher, and retired. And we see here that we have different variables inside of the different uh, classes that kind of represent how that JSON is supposed to be structured. I didn't bother with the at JSON name here to get rid of the underscores just because it would have made a lot of noise, but you know, we kind of covered that in a previous uh, or earlier in the video here. So cool. Now we have a sealed interface about the person. We have the different types of people, and we need to now instruct Moshi uh, on how to actually leverage this when it comes to deserialization. So we're going to go ahead and get a few items here. We have the advanced JSON repository is our advanced JSON repository. We will call it the advanced JSON, which is of type string is going to just get the JSON from that repository. But at this point is where we start to differ here. So uh, let's call this the advanced Moshi just because we're following in line here with all of the other naming conventions. We will go ahead and start off similar where we have the builder add last, the Kotlin JSON adapter factory build, and everything is all good. We basically mimic what is happening here. Now, uh, what we actually need to do is we need to add in a converter factory here. In order to actually do this, we need to uh, add in one more tiny little dependency here. So this is our dependencies block for Moshi Kotlin. We are going to have to call uh, or add in the adapters dependency as well. We will sync our Gradle project. The version should mimic the actual version of the Moshi library and everything will be all good because we are going to want to create the uh, person polymorphic. Wow, uh, it got it. JSON adapter factory, which is really, really nice to see. We will have the polymorphic, polymorphic JSON adapter factory dot of and we are going to pass in our, here it has the base class and then a label key. Person is going to be our class, and then the label here is going to be type. And we'll see what this starts to mean in a second. I'm just gonna put this on another line here so it starts to uh, all look good because we have the additional builder pattern function here, we're gonna to have to call the with subtype. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to define the different subtypes of the person object that we want to uh, deserialize. So we'll have our person.student class.java, and then this label right here is going to be student. We will duplicate these lines. Instead of student here, we will have teacher, and we will have retired. And then uh, instead of student, we will have, again, teacher, and then we will have retire. And it's that simple. Hopefully we can kind of see what's happening here, but we're saying of this type, and when that, uh, for this particular type, when we're trying to parse it, we're going to look at this particular field. And then all of these answers to that field are going to be what we try to actually parse them into. So we see here for type, we see here we have type listed, we have a student, we have a teacher, we have retired. 
we then have a student, we have a teacher, we have retired, and the corresponding class that we want to parse them into. With this uh, polymorphic JSON adapter factory set up, I know it's a little bit of a mouthful, this is what we are adding in to our Moshi instance. Right. Of course, we're going to add last column JSON adapter, but we are going to just be adding in the particular JSON adapter factories here so that this Moshi instance is intelligent enough to know when we are parsing for this person, this is how we do it. We look at type and then we know what to do here. The good news about this approach here is you can continue to add in more and more and more. So you can actually, uh, you know, have many uh, polymorphic JSON adapter factories attached to the same Moshi instance, and everything will just work just fine. With that, we are rounding the corner here to actually get something running. We are going to need our uh, person list type like before, because our JSON file is a straight array. So we are going to have to say types dot new parameterized type. This is going to be a list class of our person class. Then we have our person list adapter here, which is a JSON adapter of our list of person. We will set that equal to the advanced Moshi instance adapter, and we will pass in our person list type. And then we can just get to the parsing here. So then we will have our person list, which is going to be a list of our person class. This is going to be equal to our person list adapter from JSON the advanced JSON, again with the bang bang for the non null. And we will very simply just do a little for each action, print out every single person that we have. When we go ahead and run things here, we should see something exciting in the output. We see it run immediately. And we can see at the very bottom here, um, the different types of people them parsed properly, having all of the data associated with that individual class coming from the JSON here. And so we actually have successfully parsed polymorphic JSON. If you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. This is a concept that actually eluded me and kind of was a little intimidating for quite a while. But realistically, folks, it is this simple. It's really not that complicated. It's very straightforward to even see. It's very easy to reason about once you just start reading this person type here are the different labels, here are what they kind of map into. It really just kind of reads, I'm not going to say like a book, but close to one. I'm going to relate this a little bit more to uh, Android and, you know, making network calls and whatnot. But this is the guts of how we use the polymorphic JSON adapter to deserialize some more advanced JSON here. I hope it helps you in your projects and whatnot. And uh, let's just go ahead and flick over to um, changing this around. So the the reason that that we had to add in this guy here, the types new parameterized type, is because of the way that this JSON JSON is structured. Typically, from an endpoint, we're going to get back something a little different, and it's going to look like this. So you might still get back a list of states, but what's going to happen is the API would return to you um, something that looks like this, right? Where it's actually an object that has a key in it called states, and that is your list of states. We normally relate that to a data class here that would be, you know, get all states response. And in here, you would have your uh, something that looks like this, your val list state that has the list of states. And then, you know, your data class might be present inside of here, right? This starts to kind of look more like a network response that we would typically see inside of an Android project. And what this ends up doing here is this gives us one particular object, one particular type that we can instruct Moshi to actually deserialize. So we'll see that this kind of got a little out of whack here, but realistically, we don't need this anymore because we've changed the structure of that JSON. And let's see, the JSON adapter here would actually be of type get all states response, the Moshi adapter dot adapter inside of here, instead of that weird parameterized type, it is now just the get all state response class dot Java. And then inside of here, we could leave this as is, uh, if we really wanted to, we're going to just go ahead and import this here. So if we wanted the list of all of the uh, states from that response, it is exactly what this is, except we then need to just call dot state on it and we are all good. Rerunning here should yield the exact same result. Oh, 
yeah, well, okay, required value state is missing. That's because we called this state and the actual JSON here had the key named states. That's just a little bit of an error. Okay, yep, sorry. Obviously, we renamed the variable. We need to change the references to it. When we go ahead and rerun things here, we see the exact same stuff happening here. So this is uh, that, that weird parameterized type is not always needed inside of Android. It obviously is for the way that JSON was structured, but sometimes it is possible that in Android, you still just need to parse a raw response that is an array of JSON objects, not necessarily an object that returns, you know, an array inside of it or something like that, or contains an array inside of it. So in case you ever do need it, you do have that uh, parameterized type to do it, but this is kind of more or less what's happening under the hood when we connect it up to retrofit. So if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate appreciate you. And I'd really appreciate a like, a comment, uh, something down below to let me know how I'm doing. Hopefully you learned something new here today. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.